and she's created a really casual, shabby chic collection. Like she's the the one who you would seek out if you wanted shabby chic. That's your girl. Michael Weiss has partnered with Vanguard. He's created a really beautiful collection of furniture, very urban, um, very young, I think, look. Um, and Michael Weiss has a mom in the industry, and her name's Lillian August. Lillian August is partnered with Hickory White, and she's in design, and she's very well known. She actually has some beautiful showrooms in Connecticut, one in Manhattan. And she's also an interior designer as well. Um, she's partnered with Hickory White and created a really beautiful collection of, of furniture, too. Century Furniture, coming soon, um, has partnered with Thomas O'Brien. He's another interior designer that, um, once, you, once you get into this industry, if you choose to, um, he's very well known in the marketplace. And he was with a, a company that um, called Hickory Chair. And I don't represent Hickory Chair, but he had um, a collection with them, and it was their number one collection. And so his contract is up, and he's left um, Hickory Chair with all his designs, and he's partnered with Century Furniture. So this April's market, I will see, because I represent Century Furniture, the new Thomas O'Brien collection. So I'm very excited about that. Our clients get a little confused. Obviously, I just showed you a lot of different um, pictures and uh, designers, and everyone's different. And uh, our customers, they, they get they get a little overwhelmed. So at Cabot House, I find listening to our customer is probably one of the most important things that we can keep in mind. Um, being in sales, uh, because that's pretty much what we are. We are in sales. Um, we tend to maybe talk a little bit too much. And it's really important not to talk too much with our customers. We have to really listen to what they need, how their lifestyle is. Um, our customers have a lot of shopping choices. Um, there's a lot of furniture available at every price, more than ever. Um, Route 2 in West Warwick, um, at one time, maybe had a few furniture stores. Now, if you drive down that strip, there's a furniture store after one, after another, after another. And you know that there's also the internet that's um, you know, made furnishings available to customers, catalog companies, what have you. Um, we find that our opinions as designers count. However, if we don't truly understand the needs and lifestyle of our clients, we will lose them. It will go somewhere else. If we push what we feel is right for the customer and not what, is, what they feel is right for themselves, they'll go somewhere else. Um, with this said, we can present one of the most beautiful designs that we think is stunning and the perfect um, product for them. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, who are we designing for? Are we designing for ourselves or are we designing for the client? <coughs> so what I've learned over the years is when you're doing design, you don't just think about yourself and what you like. Yes, are they seeking you out because of your taste? Probably. But more and more, the designs that you create are not going to be like maybe what you see in House Beautiful or Traditional Home going to be for your client. And so it might not be your vision at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it's going to be your client's vision, and you have to figure that out. So with that said, you have to be really patient, and you have to be really flexible. Um, you have to gain your customer's trust. Um, it's it's Obviously, you might assume that your client has um, maybe a lot to spend. Um, that's not always the case. Um, we have to be really good at showing the value of the products we sell. I could take a customer to a $4,000 sofa, but why are they going to spend $4,000 on a sofa? Maybe they do have the money, but maybe they don't want to spend that much money on a sofa. 
you ha I have to figure out how to show the value in the products that we sell. Um, we really qualify our customers and we really work to overcome their objections. Um, qualifying is a really important step in the process with them. Um, we have to ask a lot of questions, but again, we have to really listen to them. It's really important that we understand the customer's priorities and price range before we get too deep into design and selections. If you don't understand that and you start showing them a whole presentation that's $10,000 over their budget, they're either, maybe they'll give you a second, um, a second chance, but maybe they'll go somewhere else and they'll say, gee, we just can't afford it. So you have to delicately understand your customer's price, our customer's price range. Um, again, we really have to be flexible. Just because she doesn't want to spend $4,000 doesn't mean that you should let her go. Yeah, we have to work with their price range. We have to be very competitive with price. Um, our clients will shop around for the best price. And if we don't have the best price, maybe they'll come back to us and say, I have a price from this competitor. Can you match it? Other times they won't. They just won't come back. So we have to make sure that we're obviously in business and we are there to make money, but we have to be very competitive. So I just wanted to touch briefly on competition because I think that's important in any luxury market. Um, obviously, we have local furniture stores that are competition. For instance, um, uh, McKay's Furniture, Terre Haute Furniture, Rhode Island Design Center, where I used to work as a competitor. Um, we also have big box furniture stores that are competition. Sure, maybe they don't have the same price points, but it's still a competitor. Customer will go, you know, maybe buy from them because they have it in stock um, and they have lower prices. And it may look the same. So big box stores like Raymore Flanagan, Jordan's, Cardi's, those are all competitors. Catalog companies and furniture uh, chain retailers are also a competitor. We compete with Pottery Barn. We compete with Restoration Hardware. We compete with Crate and Barrel. Um, I think that those are a big competitor because um, they have one style generally, and that one style, they've really um, done a good job making it so that a consumer, many consumers, can identify with one style. So do you all look at Pottery Barn at all? Wouldn't you agree with that? They do a really good job just marketing to, to, that, to a customer. Mm -hmm. Knockoffs is competition getting back to um, other furniture stores that maybe sell lower prices. This is a Barberry chair. Um, I picked this because when she took a Louis XV chair and redesigned it, this is her own design, everyone knocked it off. I mean everyone from way at the bottom and even the upper end. So those are competition for us too. The internet is big competition. Um, there's companies in North Carolina um, and other um, parts of the country that will trans ship. So if a customer comes into our store, um, Pitt sees a Vanguard sofa for $3,500, she can call a company in North Carolina and get a price. And oftentimes they're paying their people maybe a lower percentage for phone order, so they're maybe not making a lot of money on it. But they'll take the, they'll sell it for, um, you know, a thousand dollars less at a very very low margin, and they'll ship it to our customer. And so that's been tricky because we are here as a brick and mortar <laughs> store, and we're representing a lot of these um, companies like the baker and the century, and it's disheartening when they will also sell to a company that maybe doesn't represent as much as we do, and they'll, they'll you know, allow sort of this low pricing to go on. Now, it is free country, and you can sell things for pretty much what you want, but at the, 
it's it's been um, it's definitely been an eye opener in this business to see the people, the factories, the ones who partner with the brick and mortar, and the ones who are there to support us, and the ones who maybe aren't. They're they're just out for you know getting as many orders as possible. So that's that's really um, important to talk about, um, to think about. There's other luxury, um, there's other uh, luxury products that are more competition. Um, a vacation is competition for us. Maybe they'll put off buying that dining room set and go to Aruba. So it's happened. Boats and cars are also a competition for us. Um, I've had customers who say, I just bought a new car and um, you know, I can't get financed for the furniture I wanted. So, it's put on hold. Um, I think that uh, not just cars and boats, but also fashion. And, and <coughs> I feel like it's really more so than ever important for um, many people to have, um, um, you know, the, the, the brand names and the labels. And so um, maybe you disagree, but it, I, I do think that it is important for maybe just a lot of our customers. So they might put off buying that chair to buy a new Louis Vuitton handbag. And electronics. Electronics are another competition of ours. I know it sounds crazy, but MacBooks, um, iPods, all of those things. TVs, um, they are competition. Customer could fall in love with a new TV and say, I'll live with this sofa a little bit longer. So those are all things that we have to keep in mind being at, um, in furniture. Who's our competition? How do we overcome competition? We offer very personalized service at Cabot House. We're not just going to have you come into our showroom and, uh, and expect just to ring up a sale. We're there to really work with you and to understand the needs of your home. Um, we have to be very competitive with our prices at Cabot House. Once again, like I said earlier, um, the internet and other furniture stores, they can buy anywhere. It's not just like it used to be. And so we have to really be sharp and not be up here in the clouds, um, you know, thinking that, oh, that's fine, they, you know, it's okay, they'll, they'll buy from us. No, they won't. They'll go somewhere else. Um, building strong relationships, like I said, personalized service, um, that's how one of the ways we overcome competition. A lot of customers say, no, I really, I do want to buy, buy from you. I really like working with you. You did a good job with my living room. We're back to the dining room. So that's one way that we do overcome it. Um, we have to be sure that we're showing the right product. And that's definitely a challenge. Every market when I go down there to um, pick out the furniture styles, what are the current styles and trends? So we really have to stay on top of that. Um, and advertising and marketing is um, another way to overcome the competition. We have to get the word out that we're around, and that's something that we do need to improve on, but um, it is something, uh, it is a, a way that we are overcoming the competition. Referrals um, from designers uh, is, is something that has definitely helped us, word of mouth, um, all of that has been a way for us to, to get over that com competitor's hump. Um, advertising, advertising and marketing for Cabot House. Um, this is a Providence Journal ad, and um, I, when I put it up there, I thought, gee, this really could use a lot of work. You know, it ran in the Providence Journal, but to me, it's very busy. Um, maybe not the greatest colors, and the imagery is average, below average. Um, so Cabot House Advertising and Marketing is something that we're really trying to work on and grow and get better at. But we are family owned. We're not 
we're, we're just, we're, we're sort of like mom and pop-ish still. And so it's hard, it's, um, it's, it's, it's difficult for us to uh, maybe become a little more modern. Our advertising um, is, we advertise in the Providence Journal for the Rhode Island market, um, less and less. <coughs> uh, we advertise in Boston Globe for the Massachusetts market. Um, we do TV advertising. Uh, I really think the TV is, for, for us, the best um, place to be right now. I do see a lot of people coming in um, seeing our TV ads. Have you, obviously, you guys have never seen them, though, <laughs> right? Um, we specifically advertise on Channel 10 for Rhode Island. We just did an ad in So Rhodey Magazine. It's a free publication. It's probably out and about free at coffee shops and what have you. And we were in there. Um, advertise on Facebook and Twitter. This, in this particular category, we could definitely be a little more modern there. And we do have people working on getting us into that next generation. Our own website is uh, cabinhouse.com. You can go there and you can see all of the brands that we carry. And there's links to those brands' websites. Um, I feel like creative partnering opportunities is very important uh, for Cabot House to become more recognized in the marketplace. Um, for example, the Rhode Island Home Show was a great way for us to, to network. Um, this year at the Rhode Island Home Show, we actually partnered with Reba, which is the Rhode Island Builders Association. Um, for two years now, we've loaned furniture for their showcase. So last year, the uh, director of Reba came to me and asked if I would loan furniture for the showcase. And, and one of his, their interior designers on the board was going to come into the store and pick out the furniture for that home. Um, have you all heard of the home show at all? Did you see it being advertised? Last year, they actually built a house modular house, but it was a house inside the Rhode Island Convention Center. And so in that house, you could go, to, go there and see furnishings provided by Cabot House. So that was a really great way for us to gain exposure. This year, they asked us if we would do the house, but if we would have our own interior designer do it and not have an outside designer. And I said, sure. So. Instead of doing a house, they had the kids from the Providence Career and Technical Academy build a showcase, and I have some pictures of it. Um, and they built seven rooms to our specifications, and we did all the design for the rooms. Um, Rhode Island Home Show probably had at least 20,000 people go through. And then um, just the number of people who went through the showcase this year were thousands. So, if I look at the thousands of people who walked through the home show showcase versus how many people did I get into my store over the weekend, probably got a lot more people going through the home show showcase over that weekend than at Cabot House, for sure. So it's a great way for me to market the store. Um, and it also was, they did a survey and at, for the home show and it, the showcase was voted the number one feature. So I had, I think it's a good, good uh, place to be. This was the, um, the home show showcase. This was in front of it. This was some of the kids who built the showcase for us. They actually electrified it for us as well. And then inside the showcase, we featured um, a dining room. We featured a game room. We also partnered with um, an art gallery who provided a lot of the art, and that's another great way for us to network, is the art gallery uh, provided the artwork for us, but getting to know him is a really important thing for us because he works with high-end clients, and if he knows that they need furniture, he's going to recommend us. So it's just a great way to, um, to um, it's just a great opportunity. We did an office. Um, again, all of the furniture in here is from Cabot House. Um, the window treatments might not represent exactly what we would specify, but we were working under a time 
um, time frame. Um, and we also have the rugs that Cabot House carries as well, represented in the showcase. Did anyone go? <laughs> wow. We did a dressing room. And one of the number one features in the dressing room was the chandelier. We actually also partnered with um, J&K Electric. It's a lighting store in Johnston. And they, um, they provided some of the chandeliers that we, that we selected for the, for the showcase. Another, again, another way to network is now we know we're, we've partnered with J&K. They work with clients building a home. We need some furniture. So I might recommend Cabot House. So. <laughs> Um, in this room is California Closets. Are you aware of? Okay, so what we did was basically create a woman's dressing room and closet. So in the back, I know you can't really tell from this lousy picture, but that was California Closets, another um, networking opportunity. We did a sunroom here. We did a bedroom. So, looking towards the future, we have to focus on upcoming generations and what they seek for their homes. We have to be willing to change with the times. We have to be flexible. We have to understand what is important to the younger age groups. Instant gratification. Do they want things right away? Do we need to inventory more things, more products? Is eco-friendly important? Should we have more things that are better for the environment on the floor? We need to understand how the younger generation shops. If they're on the computer all the time shopping, how often are they going to come into the showroom? And how much time are they going to spend in the showroom? These are all things we have to factor in. How much are they willing to spend? Maybe the next up upcoming generation doesn't feel like $4,000 is, is the right price for a sofa. Maybe we need to change the price points that we offer. Maybe we offer more price points at $2,000. Maybe there's more demand for $6,000 sofas, which would be really great. <laughs> and how can we create brand identity with this age group? No one in here knew who Cabot House is. How do we get the word out? And also, what are their style preferences? Are they more contemporary? Are they more modern? Are they more casual? Are they more formal? These are all things that we constantly have to be thinking about. That's it. Take a whole Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any questions? No questions? Have you ever worked with a designer like have your own design team, but how is that different than working with a designer? That's a really good question. I didn't touch on that, but we do work with outside interior designers. Um, We'll give them a commission on this, uh, on the order. So yes, we do partner with interior designers. You um, put certain uh, things to carry in your store. If you carry the brand, you know, it's a specific item. Can your clients still order that, that item from you? If we don't show it, is that what you're saying? Yes, we can order it for you. We do a lot of ordering out of a catalog. Um, the companies that we carry are so vast, they're so big, they offer, if you go onto our website, you will see just how, me how many different sofas you could buy. Um, but if, you, if we don't show it on the floor, you can definitely order it. Katie also mentioned that internships are available. She has supervised interns from URI. Um, in the past, when she's at the, the Rhode Island Design Center, because she was the person I was talking to about the intern, so now that she's at Cabot yeah. House, she's still willing to do that. Did you have a question? I was going to ask if you had interest. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, definitely. We could definitely work with interns. Happy to. Yeah, I think my interest come up afterwards. And also, just for people who came in later, Dr. Helms, who 